at the edge of his seat? Yes, yes. I literally was going to be like, <laughs> okay, forget this live, forget everything. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we're about to talk about a pretty interesting uh, uh, conversation. And me and The Real Precious are somewhat on opposing sides of this. And the question is, can your 12-year-old, 16-year-old, 18-year-old child check you and tell you that you need therapy? See, the thing about what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, a lot of people say a child needs to stay in a child's place and all that stuff. And we're going to get into that. But are y'all aware, your, your father's out there, your mother's out there, all of y'all, for some dumb reason, y'all think y'all are good parents. Y'all think y'all are good people. But there's one person that knows the actual truth. And that particular person is your damn child. You can run around with this nice image that you're a good girl or you're a good man. And, you know, you, you probably pay your child support as a guy. and You think you're a good father. There's a very good possibility that you're pure trash and all you do is pay child support. Or you're a woman and you think you're a good mother, but your, your daughter looks at you and she thinks you're a pure hope. She thinks you're a whore. You don't got a uh, man at the man at the man bringing men in house. This this relationship don't work out. You got another man, another man all in your bed throughout the years in the in the, in a decade of you and this child and <laughs> being in the same household. Do you know how much nasty, terrible stuff that they've seen? And my question to y'all, what would you do if your child, regardless of what age they are, told you about the stuff that you know you did and you was wrong? So, Precious, what do you think about this before we uh, play this video? Because I, I, got, I got a video I want to play, play for y'all, but y'all got to... Y'all got to uh, get the likes up first. But what is your thoughts about that, Precious? My thoughts are that I don't see anything wrong with a child. Um, I guess checking is uh, a word that can be a little bit disrespectful when you're talking about your parents. However, I believe that children should, it should be an open door policy. It should be you can let your parents know what you see as the third party in the situation. Mm -hmm. um, however, this situation, I don't feel like she was wrong. I just thought it was the wrong place. Okay, so you're saying it's the wrong place. So mm -hmm. um, in this particular situation, I'm still waiting for y'all to hit the like button. So if y'all want to see the video, y'all got to hit the like button and contribute to the channel. So I'm waiting on some action and we'll play the video. But in this situation, Waka Flocka and his uh, ex-wife or a strange wife, girlfriend, or whatever they are, uh, they take their 16-year-old daughter to a car dealership. And in the car dealership, uh, they start kind of like going back and forth, like, you pay this, you pay that. And they start going back and forth. And the daughter's like, see, like, y'all need therapy, Right. So in this particular situation, say me and you are together, right? And say it's been, I don't know, a certain amount of time we've been together. And, um, and Mariah has seen enough of us bickering, going back and forth, or whatever, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. where we're in a car dealership trying to buy her a car. Say like, I don't know, three years from now, whatever, right? Going to buy her a car. And she's just like, you know what? Mama, I'm just going to be real with you. Mm -hmm. You need therapy. Mm -hmm. And dad, you or Aaron, you need you need therapy. Like, mm -hmm. what would you say at a car dealership? We can discuss this at a later date. But right now we talk about this car. Okay. Like, I, I just don't think that is the place 
to do it. You know, that, that's Why? reality TV. So, of course, they need the scene. But I, I just don't think that that's a place to do it. But I wouldn't mind revisiting it. I, I wouldn't mind talking okay. about it. And I wouldn't mind hearing her thoughts about it. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 So everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. So we're about to play this video and this is really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So hold up. All right, here we go. Like, what is the thing that y'all need to get done? <laughs> Therapy, maybe? The thing that y'all need to get done? Hold up. In the back. Like, what is the thing that y'all need to get done? <laughs> therapy, maybe? I took therapy. I'm fine. You're not. Oh, okay. be wait, whoa, whoa. Let, let's start right there. Let's start right there. Let's start right there. What about that part? When she, she said, said, I got therapy, I'm fine? I got therapy. I'm fine. What if you feel like you're fine? Take away the, the car dealership. What if you feel like you actually got therapy and you're like, I'm fine? And your daughter's like, no, you're not. What do you say to that? What is it that makes you think that I'm not fine? Because mm. obviously there's a reason that she's mm -hmm. saying it. She's not a kid is just not going to say things just to say it. You right. know what I mean? They have right. to have, you know, some type of context to that, especially being the child. Yeah. So uh, Mary, uh, she's probably a, a, a terrible parent. Uh, Mary says, I would say you need to shut up. Well, Mary, what hey, if you what it if it looks you, like Marie? Marie, I'm sorry. What but Marie, what if you you are the one that needs to shut up? See, sometimes a parent needs to shut, shut up. Shut up, shut up, just shut up. Shut up. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Some, like, yeah. I I I think in a lot of cases, the parent is the one that needs to shut up. See, just because we're the parent, just because we're older doesn't mean we 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 know more a lot of you parents are like trash and the reason why some of you are trash is because you're so used to all of your friends and all of your family members like pandering to you ignoring you or they might be as toxic and as and, and as dysfunctional as you are so since they are dysfunctional and you are dysfunctional, family members, I mean, none of y'all realize that y'all are dysfunctional. It's like taking a shit and after being in the bathroom for a good 10, 15 minutes, you don't smell the shit anymore. But somebody else walks in the bathroom, they're going to be like, oh my God. So. Unless you light a match. Unless you light a match, <laughs> we're gonna talk about that for a second. Like, wait, <laughs> do, <laughs> do y'all know if you light, if you just just light a match, like the smell goes away? Okay, we're gonna get back into that. Like, she taught me that, and I'm like, yo, this is genius. <laughs> but that's a totally different scenario. But what if you, as a parent, needs to shut up? Yeah. So if, okay, so you're saying with, with you, if uh, Amy Ryer says, um, mama, you need therapy. You're like, I got therapy. Well, there's still a problem. So you'll just say, so what, what do you think? Yeah, I would say I would be open to having the conversation because it's far too many times where parents just think they know what they're doing because they're parents. Parents, you know, want to be parents and not people. And mm -hmm. parents are people. And people are sometimes fucked up. Like, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. just are. And they're, they're, there's just no way as a parent that you can look at your child and your child is telling you something is wrong. Right. And you're denying that something is wrong. Yeah. And that's what's going on with Tammy and Waka. Because for anybody who knows about... Uh, Tammy Rivera and, and Waka Flocka, they are a dysfunctional couple and they've been dysfunctional for years. And a lot of the dysfunction comes from Tammy. Now, some of y'all may say, Waka be running around, he wilding out. Well, this, is, this isn't giving him an excuse, but when you get with a rapper, Rappers is going to do rapper stuff. I've never seen a rapper not do rapper shit. 
So right. if you get with a rapper and he's doing rapper stuff, well, that's your dumb ass for getting with a rapper. So I, I'm not excusing him, but she got with a rapper and he does rapper shit. So it is what it is. But when it comes to Tammy herself, she has admitted that she is the problematic person, mm -hmm. you know? And one of the things that I always pay attention to because I have a coaching group is there is something called, I, I actually coined the phrase, mama trauma. When you have a daughter and you're a woman, there's a very good possibility that you are traumatizing your daughter without even realizing it. And the reason why you don't realize it, because most likely your own mother traumatized you and you think how your mom treated you is normal. And the only thing that she taught you is dysfunction. And the only thing you can teach is dysfunction. And you actually think dysfunction is normal. But no, these young people have a better understanding of what's going on around them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we both have daughters, Precious. Like, what are, you, what are your thoughts on just being a mom and raising a daughter? Like, what have you seen in, in all that? I mean, you have to be open towards your kids because we're living in a different day and age. We're living mm. in a day and age where, you know, it's a, a phrase, you don't know what you don't know. Well, these kids know. <laughs> you know, they, they know. know. They, they, they're they aware. They have access. Um, they see other uh, relational, you know, uh, situations where it's just like, well, it's like that there you're able to talk to your mom or you're able to talk to your dad, but I can't do that at home. Or yeah. whenever I say something, you know, it's a problem. Um, you know, a lot of, I saw somebody in the chat said that she needed to get a whipping and things like that. You need to talk to your children because you need to learn how to communicate what you need to say to them instead of going to grab a belt out the closet. Mm -hmm. That's the lazy, most, traumatizing way that right. you discipline your child as well as communicate with your child because although you're not talking you are being physical with them which is telling them that you know it's it's a harmful act and so it's traumatizing so yeah. I, me and my daughter we talk all the time all the time and she's very open and I'm very open and we express our feelings and I don't take what she say um, you know lightly because again, she's human. She's she has her own experience. She has her own feelings. And I remember growing up in a household where you know I was with my mother and father. But just be you know, just because you're with your mother and father doesn't mean that everything is always perfect. Right. So I was in a in a household where it was do what I say. You know what I mean? And get good grades and 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 make sure you're good in school and things like that. But the talking piece, the talking piece was not quite there mm -hmm. as much as it should have been. You know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. so, you know, those who don't know, I was adopted. And so while my parents are my parents, they're not necessarily my blood parents. And so mm -hmm. I am not like my parents in a lot of ways. And so yeah. I am the one who is like <laughs> Waka Flocka and Tammy's daughter. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, something right here. Something <clears throat> right. is not right here. And, and my daughter is like that because mm -hmm. she's of me. She's yeah. like me. And so she has that nature about her. But parents, again, need to understand that while you are parents, you are also people to these children. Right. You're not just their parents. And so you don't, although you have that authoritative type of parenting style, you also need to have a communicative parenting style where mm -hmm. your child can talk to you and you can talk to them. And when they say things to you, you're not looking at them like, well, I got therapy. I'm fine. It's a two-way street. That it, it's so sad because um, um, what what y'all don't realize is giving your kid a whooping is actually showing your kid that you've given up, or and or you don't know how to communicate with your kid. Therefore, you give them whoopings. Mm -hmm. I I I brought my kids up. And I, you know, when my kids were young, I was in my, I was in my teens and twenties. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, I gave uh, whoopings or whatever. But as I got older, I realized that I gave whoopings simply because I didn't know how to communicate properly. Mm -hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, what I've learned just in my own life, that in any situation, you know, when it comes to conflict, there's some called conflict resolution. Yeah. And the same thing goes with your child. If your child is acting up, whooping them doesn't help them. Whooping yeah, they, them they can is, become bullies. Yeah, it's going to make them matter because there's a problem. Children, unless there's, a, you know, a, a mental, you know, thing going on with them, it's because they want something. Yeah, they need and, it. They may not be able to get it. So I'm not going to say, well, they're a child. They need to sit down. I understand that. And I agree with you. But at the same time, the thing that they want, I'm not saying some money, a toy, a car, or or their way, or go, go outside. No. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about love, attention, to be heard. A lot of children are being silenced on a normal basis. And speaking of being silenced, if y'all don't hit this damn like button, we're going to be silent and, 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 and we're just going to sit here and look at y'all. So can y'all please hit the like button? We need about 100 more likes. So take a second and hit the like button. All right. If I got to say it again, we're going to go to commercial. But. Uh, and, and thank you, uh, Tarek. I see you in there. Get these likes up, y'all. Hit the like button. But a lot of children are pushed to just be a, a young, especially daughters. They're pushed to be like a little you, mm -hmm. right? And whatever it is that the mom is doing and mom wants, you now want the daughter to want that too. But mm -hmm. Your daughter is not a little you. Your daughter is herself. And a lot of these young women are getting like uh, whoopings and all this other stuff and yelled at and treated like crap simply because they want to do something different than what their mother wants to do. Yeah. Some, some of these um, young women, some of y'all, y'all were told if you don't go to college, I'm going to put you out the house. What if you don't want to go to college? You know? And, and at the end of the day, when you turn around and 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 do that and then turn around and whoop them or kick them out the house. Do you know how many women have the same freaking story? And that same freaking story is I've been on my own since I was 16. Mm -hmm. Put a one in the chat. If you're a woman and you have that same story, I've been on my own since I was 17 or something like that. Put a one in the chat if that was you. Because that's the thing we got to uh, look at. You know, it's not just can your child check you. Like, why is your child checking you? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you checking yourself? That part. Go ahead, Precious. No, I, I, I'm i waiting for the ones. I'm waiting for the ones. Um, because, I, I mean... <sighs> Unfortunately, like you said, um, mothers raise daughters to be many thems and daughters are daughters. God don't even give you your children for you to keep for a long period of time. <laughs> he's yep. actually when he gives you children, he's actually testing you to see what type of steward over these children that you can be, which means he's mm -hmm. testing you as an individual, as a person, as a as a human being to see what kind of patience will you have with this child? What kind of love and compassion and empathy will you have with your child in order to make them a better person? Because honestly, it's not even about you anymore when you have these kids. Right. It's not about you. But yet mothers make it about them all. The, oh, I got therapy. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Mothers make it about them all the time. Well, what if you need more therapy? What if, and what if the therapy just didn't work? Just going to therapy don't mean nothing. Did right. it work? Right. Obviously, there's nothing that she's implementing or putting into practice or action to actually show her daughter that the therapy is working for her. Mm -hmm. And Tammy is a little angry something. Oh, yeah. She's a little fireball. You know, uh -huh. she, she and she's a little angry, little, little, little short person. And, um, um, I, I can't imagine why Walker is has still been around. Maybe just for the child, but there's no way in hell I I deal with some mess like that. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, she's she's <laughs> you can tell how she acts now. Like, 
it's, it's just really sad that women aren't aware of how they act. Mm-hmm. And some women act just think that somebody is supposed to just put up with it. Right. And you know why? Because they have a daughter and their daughter puts up with it. So they think a man's supposed to put up with it. Mm-hmm. See, the family members in your, in your, in your, like, uh, growing up as a young girl, I'm, I'm assuming cause I'm not a girl, but growing up as a young girl, I, I can imagine having a house full of women, uh, a family full of women and everybody is dysfunctional talking shit and, and yelling and arguing with each other. You actually think the rest of the world is as stupid as your family is. Mm-hmm. So you leave the house or leave your household thinking that you okay because you're as smart as your dumbass family members and you go out in this world and now you get hit in the face with life and you're like, uh, what is wrong with these men? Oh, I don't, I don't get along with women. I, I, you don't get along with nobody. You ain't got no friends. You can't find no man. Why? Because you actually grew up with a distorted reality thinking that your parents and your family members that you grew up around was normal but they were dumb and dysfunctional and now you out in this world and you don't know what the hell to do because other people aren't dumb and dysfunctional yeah a lot of daughters honestly need a whole detox from their mothers and mm-hmm. grandmothers and aunties you need a whole detox to know who you are aside from these people who are indoctrinating you with what was indoctrinated in them growing up from their um, mothers who didn't have anyone to talk to them, who didn't have anyone to be patient with them, who didn't have anyone to have compassion. And, and it's mostly the talking piece. Mm-hmm. And that that's the issue. There's a lot of families who don't communicate because that's not something that was in their childhood. They weren't There's taught. There's so yep. many parents who don't even say the words, I love you to their children, but they'll curse them out. Like mm-hmm. they, like they adults in the street. Yep. Yep. So I want to um, add something, two things. One, uh, if you look in the link, uh, the link that's pinned in the chat, uh, I made my emotional um, uh, attachment style. I'm sorry. I made my attachment style blueprint course only nine ninety nine, And I did that on purpose because for a certain amount of time, I, I was like, all right, um, am I in this to make money or am I in this to help people? Right? So my course is in the chat, pinned in the chat. If you think that you've been uh, traumatized by your mother and if you're a male or a female, I need you to go to the link in the chat right now and buy my course. I made it $9.99. Did that on purpose. Because like I said, if I can help more people, more people will be helped. And it's not the answer to all, your whole life, right. but it will help you understand your level of childhood trauma, what your mom did to you, what your dad did to you, and what you may be doing to your children. So the reason why I made this nine ninety nine is because a lot of you are parents. And if I can actually help you realize how dysfunctional you may be and pay attention to your blind spots. I'm actually helping your child by me helping you. So it ain't about no money. So go to the link in the chat right now and hit done after you bought the, bought the course It's a five day course. And it's going to help you understand what your attachment style is, is four attachment styles is secure attachment style, which is the positive attachment style. But the other three is anxious, 199. No. See what I'm saying? Come on, y'all cheap asses. Damn, I made it 10, 999. Damn. Was <laughs> well, that supposed to be a, a super chat, Lorenzo? I think that was supposed to be a super chat. No, they said 199. I don't know. I don't know. Then even if it's a super chat, do better. Come on, y'all. So your attachment styles are, you can either be avoidant you can either be uh disorganized or you can be anxious so a lot of you are either one of those three right there and it's important for you 
to simply get a better understanding of what your attachment style is so you can better yourself so you can be a better parent. So take the course so you can be a better parent to your children. So your children won't have the same attachment style and attain same issues as you have. So like I said, everybody go to the top of this chat. It's, it's showing up in blue. All you got to do, hit the link, buy the course, and it's $9.99. And hit done when you did it. I, I have a million times. Okay, I've told a million. I have told a million times to go to therapy. She refuses. I have gone to therapy. I paid $100 per, se per session. That's dope. That's dope. But that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes people are just simply lazy. And sometimes people simply don't have the money. But in this particular situation here, you literally don't have to call around for therapists. You don't have to sit down and talk to no therapist if you're lazy. And you don't have to come out of $100 if you ain't got no money. So the link in the chat is simply $9.99. Buy the freaking course. It's, five, it's, a, it's a five day course that will break down literally every part of your life. It's not therapy, but it will help you. Like I said, I want grown people to be better parents because a lot of you are just like Tammy and Dan Walker, just oblivious to their own problems. I do not see the link. The link is in the chat. Look at look up the look at the top of the chat. It's in blue, and it says, "If you if you think your mama try traumatize you, click the link." So it's in here. So let me hit you. Uh, hit this. Uh, thank you for the uh, super chat. Uh, the common sense expert. The belt is no. The belt is not necessary. Uh, it's not the answer to every situation, but without it, kids will be out of control. See, this is the actual problem. Mm -hmm. the, the belt is not necessary. The no. only people who use a belt are people who don't know how to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Because we ask, you know, we ask for patience and it's not like God just gives us patience. He gives mm -hmm. us opportunities to be patient. So what are you doing with that opportunity? Are you using a belt? Is that what you're doing? Because we're supposed to be patient with our children. Mm -hmm. So are you using a belt to replace what you could be doing? You know, fearing consequences doesn't mean physical harm. Right. You do not have to physically harm your child in order for them to fear consequences or um, or uh, respect you. Maybe they don't respect you because you're whipping them. Exactly. Maybe they don't respect you because you're taking out a belt every time they do something. Mm hmm. Because at the end of the day, That's if you thing. keep whooping your child, something's wrong with you. That's the problem. parent. And like you said, that is exactly the problem, because obviously, you know, no other way, which means you need to do a little bit more searching to find another way. Test mm -hmm. yourself. Test yourself. It's not about these kids always learning and being in the in the in the uh, learning seat. As parents, we got to take a seat, too. In the classroom. Yeah. That's a fact. So um, let's let's look at the rest of this uh, the video. Hold on a second. Here we go. So for those for those of you who didn't see the first part, everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. Drop a super chat. Cash app is op open. Aaron one thousand or drop a cash out for Michelle. Michelle fifteen hundred with one L. In the back. Like, what is the thing that y'all need to get done? <laughs> therapy, maybe? I took therapy. I'm fine. You're not. I'll be down, down, so if I have a little 16 year old girl, tell, tell me. Tell me, y'all true, y'all right. And that's the problem. You got this analysis, but from what? From living with y'all. Right. Like, what you thought she was going to say? Like, what kind of dumb question is that? You got this analysis from what? What do you think? Like, if a random person says, hey, you need therapy, I would be able to say, "What? Right. where did you get this analysis? But damn, my own child. Front, let me, bro. Right, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. My kids, I have two daughters, right? And they both have told me about myself. They told their mama about herself. 
All right. And that's important for mm-hmm. your kids to be able to voice how they feel. Yep. Some of you are so dysfunctional where you don't want your child to expose you. You don't want your child to expose you. You know how people be exposing people on YouTube? Ah, oh, so-and-so exposed. And you look at the video and be like, ah, oh, what is wrong with these people hating on me? And they're not hating on you. They're exposing you. Mm-hmm. And the same way you feel about that person talk about you in your comments or whatever, whatever, your kid can be doing the same thing. But the thing about it is, why do you feel so upset when somebody exposes you? Because you lying to somebody or you lying to yourself. Let me tell you something, just as an example of what my kids have told me. My, oh, my youngest daughter said, you know what, daddy? I actually was traumatized by the divorce, I guess mm-hmm. for a while. And she said this in the last, what, three, four months. She said, um, maybe I, I, I kept it in for so long. I, I, I didn't really think about it. So, yeah, I actually was traumatized by the divorce. Mm-hmm. And my oldest daughter told me, Daddy, uh, I would never whoop my child. And I'm like, OK, why? Because she said whoopers don't work like you whooping me just made me more, more angry. And I whooped her, you know. But like I said, I didn't know how to communicate properly because when I was whooping her, I was like, what, 21, Mm -hmm. you know, I I was still learning how to be a a man, a parent, all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I did a good job as a parent, but I traumatized my kids. Both of my kids were traumatized due to the divorce. And I divorced my ex-wife and it was selfish. And I broke up my family and it literally hurt all three of them. I traumatized my ex-wife my, and, and my two daughters. But how did I know that? Because we have open dialogue and I don't run around talking about, ah, I'll whoop you if you say something. Uh, don't don't, don't uh, stay in the child's place or whatever stupid mess y'all be saying. No, my children mm-hmm. always have had a full understanding that if you got a problem with what I'm saying and doing, let's have a conversation about it. Parents feel as though when their child tells them something, and most times it's the truth mm-hmm. um, that they are disrespecting them. Mm-hmm. And that is a stigma that we need to just kick out the door. Yeah. Because if your child, if your child can't come to you about the little things, they're not going to come to you about the big things. And then yep. you are going to wonder why your child does not want to be bothered with you. Why your child does not come around. Why, they smoke why your crack. child is why they on stripping. drugs. Right. Mm. Because they did not have that safe um, space at home to be able to express themselves. And I mean, yep. it only makes sense. I, I, I don't, you know, I don't understand why Waka and, 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 and old girl was sitting here like, <gasps> me? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> did you see Waka's mouth on the floor? He was like, yeah. oh. He looked at her like, well, I'll be problem. damned if a 16 year old tell me. Ask this, but what? Yeah. Oh. Hold on, hold on. I, just, I want y'all to see the look on this, but like, they, they both was like, what? Right. She was crazy. If I have a little 16 year old girl tell, tell me, tell me, y'all true that right. And that's the problem. You got this analysis, but from what? From living with y'all. So we're going to go go a little farther. I just wanted y'all to see what Michelle is talking about. They was just like, I- excuse me? Mm-hmm. Like y'all don't been on marriage boot camp looking right. crazy. Right. All on Love & Hip Hop season after season looking crazy and your own child is shocking you? You got visual. You got Proof. TV shows. You got... <laughs> you got it's, recorded. It's, it's not recorded. recorded. <laughs> what the hell? Your dysfunction is on tape, Mrs. Right. Mrs. <laughs> this shit is crazy. So look. But parents oh, will ahead. do right. Someone just said gaslight. I was just about to say that. Yep. Parents will do that to make you feel like you're crazy as the child. Mm-hmm. 
to, to and that's a form of you know putting you back in a place that that's like okay no you you don't see what's going on here you're not supposed yeah. to, you you're not supposed to talk about what's you're going not on here to talk about this. yeah well how dare you tell me that I'm I'm jacked up as a parent how dare you yeah and it's like the the daughter's like what 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 world are y'all living in and as children this mm -hmm. is exactly how you feel I've been in this position. It's exactly how you feel. Like y'all making me feel like I'm crazy for I'm playing crazy. out the obvious truths here. I'm yep. not. I'm not. You know, taking this out the sky and trying to run with this is this is my truth. This is my right. reality. Just because you don't think that is true to you doesn't mean that I'm not being affected and my feelings um, shouldn't be expressed to you. Mm -hmm. And if it takes for me to be a mirror to you and tell you, Hey, look, I've seen y'all done every y'all done all of this around me. Did you forget? Did you forget? Did, did y'all not think that I was not going to be coherent? Did I, did y'all not think eyes, that I was going to be ears? Right. I wasn't a statue in the house. <laughs> when y'all was arguing, I'm in the room crying. When y'all going back and forth, I'm, I'm upstairs like, Oh man, mom and daddy at it again. Y'all don't think y'all kids are affected by that. Yeah, when you had that random dude come over your house, you don't think you, uh, your child heard the little eh, 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 eh. some random dude don't even know who the hell it is. It's like 11 o'clock at night and all of a sudden you start hearing Don't you think your child your, your child isn't aware of hearing what, what wondering what the hell this is and, and, mm -hmm. and it ain't no man? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? That's the truth. So look, they know they take they they they're sponges, right? They say children are sponges. Uh -huh. So she 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 has taken all of that in. Yeah. So there's a book uh, that uh, me and my coaching group have went over called "You're Not Crazy, It's Your Mother." It's a real book. Okay. So before we go over this book, I need you guys to. Uh, take down some notes because this will help you with your parenting because there's another book we went over called conscious parenting but we want to talk about you're not crazy it's your mother real quick and before we do that i need you to take out your wallet and contribute to the channel so i need five contributors because i'm about to drop some knowledge that you you usually have to pay for when it comes to me because like i said People pay a nice amount of money to be a part of my coaching group. So I'm about to give y'all some information and y'all got to pay also. So I need five super chats or five cash apps in the next 10 minutes. All right. So look, there is in this book there. Uh, they broke down two different types of mothers. And let me know in the chat which type of mother you are. Or which type of mother you had growing up. So which type of mother did you have growing up? Or which type of uh, mother are you? The ignoring mother or the controlling mother? The ignoring mother or the controlling mother? So the ignoring mother may not teach basic self-care techniques. I'll say that again because this is important. The ignoring mother may not teach simple, basic self-care techniques because she was always working. You were probably a latchkey kid. She was always chasing some man or always doing something else instead of looking after you. And you literally had to raise yourself. You literally had to learn what, what pads and, and all this stuff that y'all had to deal with. You, you had to learn all that stuff on your own or ask one of your friends or something or ask your auntie because your mother was an ignoring mother. So on top of that, this causes you as an adult now to have this need to be seen. You ever been on Clubhouse? Women can't, uh, un can't mute, mute out. They, Who are you talking to? Let me tell you something. Not, well, I think, well, I feel that they, they just blurting out all this stuff like somebody asked them something. Well, this particular woman most likely had an ignoring mother. If you have an ignoring mother, one, you may not even know how to take care of your own self. Okay, uh, Pharaoh said, I had a controlling mother. Okay, okay. But yeah, put in the chat, did you have a controlling mother or an ignoring mother? 
The next thing is um, when you have an ignoring mother, you may not think somebody has the capability of loving you because you didn't have love from your mother. Your mother just raised you, but she didn't love you. She never told you she loved you. Uh, when you go to hug her, she's just like, yo, can you? No, I'm, I'm good. And you can put yourself in a position as an adult to be the, it, it, I, I call it the extreme opposite. So a lot of times when you had the ignoring mother, you become the controlling mother. Or if you had a controlling mother and she was all in your business, you knew how it felt. So you're like, I ain't going to be like her. I'm going to be different. Next thing you know, you're an ignoring mother um, inadvertently. And I call it the 12-6-6-12 uh, uh, the uh, problem. If your mother was 12, which is the ignoring mother, right? By the time you're grown, you're six. You're a controlling mother. And then you're going to raise your ch children, and they're going to be 12 mm -hmm. to their children, right? Which is the ignoring mother. And then their children are going to grow up, and they're going to be six, which is the controlling mother. And the cycle continues, and next thing you know, your mother, as a grown woman, your mother relates with your daughter, but you can't relate with your own daughter, and you wonder why your daughter hates you, but she loves your mother. Why? Because your mother raised you in some type of way, and you are not the opposite of how your mother raised you, and your daughter doesn't like you, but loves your mother. Why? Because your mother is just like her because of the 12-6 thought process, right? It's 12-6 syndrome. If you are a controlling mother, you turn into a... It, I'm sorry, if your mother was a controlling mother, you turn into an ignoring mother. And since your daughter got ignoring from you, your mother is controlling and she rather have that versus you. Mm -hmm. I see that all the time. So let's go to the um, engulfing mother. I'm sorry, the engulfing mother, not the controlling mother. So that is the ignoring mother. This is the engulfing mother. The engulfing mother doesn't see you as an individual. You're simply an extension of her. Mm. Uh-oh, did you have an engulfing mother? I had that kind of mama. Yeah, and what ends up happening, if you have an engulfing mother, you can turn into an ignoring mother to your own children. So let's keep going down this rabbit hole. If you're in an engulfing, the engulfing mother sees you as an extension of them instead of seeing you as a person of your own, as an individual. Next thing you know, she may even treat you like her counselor or best friend because she isn't really capable of allowing you to be you. So since she's this engulfing mother, she thinks everything you do is for her so mm -hmm. since you're a child she doesn't see you as your child she she sees you as everything she needs from for herself so you become like uh like as an example let me give you an example as of an, on a, an engulfing mother the type of mother that will call you in the other room and say oh where's my remote control and you're like mom i, I don't know well you need to find it next thing you know you had to be a, the snitch and snitch on your siblings. And you're like, why? Why I got to tell me what they're doing. You're in charge, right? You had to cook all the meals. You had to clean up after everybody. Why? Because your mother was literally, she literally appointed you the person that does everything around the house. And she looks over your shoulder like a hawk. Like, you better do this. You better do that. And you're like, yo, ma, like, I, I got it. And you grow up so traumatized where you start treating your boyfriend like that. Mm. You looking over your boyfriend's shoulder like, what you doing? Why you say that? Why you post that? Why? What, what, what you doing? What, 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 where you been? Because mm -hmm. your mother was like that. 
And it turns into a trust thing. The only way you can trust somebody is by engulfing yourself in them. Mm -hmm. Right? So put a one in it. Well, uh, put engulfing or ignoring, depending on uh, which one, which mother was you. But um, Precious, you said that your mother was kind of like engulfing? Um, yeah, it was, you know, one of the, like you said, on, and I had my father in the house too, so I had a balance. Um, however, you know, again, my dad set the foundation, my mom set the tone of the home, and it was one of those things where it was just, uh, a control, uh, um, engulfing type of controlling type of mm -hmm. um, narrative. You know what yeah. I mean? And like I said, they're my adoptive parents, and while I am their daughter, I am not like them. And so mm -hmm. I saw how things were going down because I got adopted at nine, so I didn't have this treatment since a baby. Some people have it right. since they're a baby, and they don't know any different. But I'm like. Some is not quite right. You know what I yeah. mean? And, you know, when you start to express how you feel about the way things are going down and I'm not you, that's something that you would do. That, that, mm -hmm. That's not, not my life. It's, oh, well, you're being disrespectful. And, you're, yeah. you know, you're, what, what, do you, what do you mean? I don't, I don't understand why you're saying that. And it's like. In other words, why, why do you think of your you're disrespectful because you think you don't think like me, right? Yeah. And it's a yeah. controlling way to be as a parent. And parents will try to do that to you still as an adult. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, <laughs> the parenting not is not um, in full effect anymore. Right. Because now, now I'm a parent. And because that did happen to me, I said, I'm not going to be controlling nor ignoring. I am going to be active and and. and intentional about communicating with my daughter yeah so she doesn't feel like her feelings are being ignored so she doesn't feel like her reality is not a reality because mm -hmm. again children's reality are their reality you can't take that away from them it's, it's like taking away their voice and putting masking tape on top of their mouth yeah yeah so uh marie says i think uh you need to cover uh, that some mothers do too much for their children. Yeah, that's another type of an engulfing mother where the mom doesn't allow her son to actually become a man and she, she's an engulfing mother. So she's just doing everything for the son, takes care of everything for the son, even washes his clothes when he's a, 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 an adult. And next thing you know, guess what? He starts to look for his woman to do the same thing for him because he had an engulfing mother. But we're going to pull out of this rabbit hole because none of y'all have contributed to the channel. So we're going to go back to the surface, stay surface level, because like I said, this game is what people pay me for. So if y'all want to just keep this as a, a lighthearted uh, YouTube show instead of something that can actually help you with your life, we'll just go back to the video. But we go back to the, it, uh, down the rabbit hole if y'all uh, actually start contributing to the show. So let's go back to the video. Like, what is the thing that y'all need to get done? <laughs> therapy, maybe? I took therapy. I'm fine. You're not. All I'll be down, so if I have a little 16-year-old girl tell, tell me, me I'm not true that right. And that, that's the problem. You got this analysis, but from what? From living with y'all. So this is like, even, even Walker, and this is really sad. He's just like, I can't believe a 16-year-old girl is telling us, okay, some of y'all, I want y'all to think for a second. Remember when y'all was 16? Think about how y'all looked at y'all mom. Think about how y'all looked at y'all dad. You had a really good understanding of what was going on. You seen how dysfunctional your mom was. You seen how emotionally unavailable your dad was. You seen everything at the age of 16. This young girl in this video was 16 years old. You see everything when you're 16. Because a lot of times you start putting together the, the pieces and when you're like, yo, 
So the reason why I'm so anxious is because of my mom. The reason why I'm so like I don't have no friends is because of how my mom treated me. The reason why I have abandonment issues is because my dad like left us. Mm -hmm. You see all of that when you're young. Yeah. But the problem is you're at an age where you're not traumatized by other things yet. See, right. when you when you 25, 30 years old, you traumatized by the opposite sex. You traumatized by getting fired from your job. You traumatized because you broke your arm in a car accident. You traumatized by the world. But when you're 16 years old, the only things that are traumatizing you are your household and school. Mm -hmm. Because that's your entire world. So with that being said, you have a clearer understanding of who is traumatizing you and how you got here versus mm -hmm. a 30-year-old or 40-year-old who got, got ran across the coals from like 30 different scenarios. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Precious? I, I totally agree. When you're that young, you have a clearer mind. And so mm -hmm. you can decipher things a lot better um, than your parents because they just have so much more responsibility and, you know, raising you, protecting you, looking after you. And so you may say to them, um, you know, I feel this way about such and such. And because they got bills on the mind, because they have trying to get you to practice or what they have so many other things on their mind that now they either become that ignoring mom. I don't know we're going down a rabbit hole, but we got a, a contribution here where they're either become that ignoring mom or that controlling mom, the ignoring yeah. mom, like, Oh, well, I, whatever, like just keep going on about your business. I don't know what you're talking about or the controlling mom. Who's like, no, that's not how it is. This is how it is. And I, and, and you hold should on, hold on. wait, 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 explain that part. Explain that. That's a good one. Explain that part. Yeah. I mean, you tell your child something and the parent tries to reverse or or tell you what you're saying is not the actual picture mm -hmm. and try to reprogram you mm -hmm. or reindoctrinate inside of you what they've been trying to, because obviously now you're going against the program. Yeah. So you say how you're feeling now you're going against the program. And so instead of being open, having the conversation being transparent again, parents being people to their children. Now it's oh no, that 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 ain't right. You being that didn't happen. That that's not right. When when did mm -hmm. that happen? And like and like Tammy said, um, she's like, well, I I she said she spoke about therapy as if it was a course in college. Like oh, I took, <laughs> yeah, I, took therapy. I graduated. I have my I have my going to therapy degree. No, you 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 screwed up now. Therapy is a is a is a ongoing process, a lifelong thing, uh -huh. and you have to always be reconditioning your mind and renewing your mind. Because again, as adults, we have so many things that consume our minds mm -hmm. that we sometimes do need to take that step back and take a breather and say, "Hmm, let me analyze and really dissect what you're saying to me, so I can actually probably uh, properly be in a position to." Um, tend to your needs instead yeah. parents totally ignore that or they'll totally flip the script on you and make you feel like you're crazy as the child and then you grow up not liking men or not liking women not respecting uh, men not respecting women doing your own thing figuring it out on your own and then that's when you get in a world of trouble yeah because then the world teaches you the real and your parents been teaching mm -hmm. you the fake. Yep. And then on top of that, this is the reason why a lot of uh, kids um, end up being hoes or strippers or drug dealers or gang members or whatever, because they don't feel heard. Because let's go a little deeper, because now, um, you know, if we get a couple more super chats we uh, or cash apps. We'll go a little deeper. But like I said, we'll stay on the surface level. But um I want y'all to think about the psyche of, of a child. Like if they feel ignored, right? If they feel like, like gaslighted, just like with, with her, she's like, no, there's problems. And they're like, no, it's not. Imagine some of you ladies got blanked when you were a child and you already know what I mean. Right. And then you go to your mom and you're like, mom, your boyfriend did A, B, and C to me, or your brother 
Uncle Jimmy did A, B, and C. Or your dad did something, then A, B, and C to me when you used to drop me off uh, when you went to work. And that mother, excuse me, and that mother, that piece of crap mother, turns around and says, no, he didn't. Or, well, what was you wearing? Mm-hmm. That's denying you of your yeah. reality. That's the, the worst. next thing you know, you start feeling like, Wait, what what do you mean? Like, I went through it. How are you telling me that something didn't happen to me? Why is that type of tone being, why don't you protect me? Mm -hmm. So many of you women would actually do the same damn thing. You don't think you'll do the same thing, Mm -hmm. but some of y'all will do the same damn thing. You know why? Because you literally do not give a shit about your children like you say you do. Mm -hmm. You give a shit about your image. Yep. Your child, you didn't plan for your child. Your child came at the most inopportune time of your entire life. And you are in some type of way resentful for when your child was born. Because you had so much shit going on in your life and your child was just yet another problem. So now you're looking at your child like, if you don't sit down somewhere uh, telling me about myself or telling me about this and that, I got enough problems. I don't want to hear it. Don't don't tell me about what my boyfriend did. You know how much I got. I don't want to go and be single again. I'm out here. You telling me my boyfriend did A, B, and C or or my dad did A, B, and C. How dare you? Because you so preoccupied with your own issues yep. where you don't have the capacity or the bandwidth to deal with somebody else's issues. So it's like, how dare you add more problems to my life? Now I got to look at my brother, boyfriend, or my dad, mm-hmm. or whoever. Like, I got enough going on in my life. And mm-hmm. the, the, the problem is, you didn't plan for this child to be here. So it's like somebody just dropped a new problem on your doorstep and you finally getting your own trauma together. You mm-hmm. finally getting your own life together because your your uncle, your 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 father probably did the same thing to you. And now the damn cycle done started back. At, you ain't got time for this. So what do you do? You ignore your child's truth because you don't want to deal with what happened to you. You don't want to deal with what happened to you. You don't block it out. You don't let it go. You don't forgave. And next thing you know, somebody don't did the same damn thing to your goddamn daughter and you don't want to deal with it. So you gaslight your own child because you look at your child like, wait, you have the audacity to add more problems to my life. Cause it caught it, it, you. Right. It hurt and- you go ahead. It causes them to actually deal with it. And nobody wants to chop right. the cancer or the problem at the root. Mm-hmm. They want to continue to add to it and adding to it is ignoring it. Adding to it is gaslighting it. Yep. And if you don't want to chop it at the root, then find your child some help outside of you. Right. Schedule your child to go to therapy. Schedule your child for counseling. Hook your child up with coaches, male influences, someone who is going to actually hear them out. Because if you're their only um, uh, course of action and you're not taking any action, again, you're going to be in a situation where your child don't want to have nothing to do with you. They're not going to want to have anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. Love. um, I had a, a, um, a live the other day and someone said, love is spelled out T-I-M-E, time. Mm. And if you don't want to give your child the time, oh, you're going to be regretting it later. You're going to be regretting it later because you're going to want to be able to connect with your child when they're an adult and then wonder why your child don't want to have nothing to do with you. And then as an older adult, an older parent, now you really got to sit in your mess. Now yep. you really have to, to say, 
damn, my own child don't even want to call me. My own child don't even want to talk. Oh, because you didn't take out the time. And now in your old age, you see you don't have a lot of time left. Mm -hmm. So take the time when you have the time, because we don't have a lot of time here on this earth. Right. Your child and your child's problems are not an inconvenience to you. Right. They're your responsibility because whatever problem your child has most likely came and <laughs> you're, you're part of you're part of the it. reason. You're part of the reason why they're having problems. So for you to ignore your child's problems is almost like what? Ignoring the child inside of you's problems. Right, because your child's problems is there to speak to your issues. Yeah. These yeah. these kids, like you said, these kids aren't planned. God know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And he's going to send you exactly what you're battling with. He's going to send you somebody to r- resurrect from the dead what you're ignoring, what you fail to, to talk about, what you fail to acknowledge. And you're going to get so frustrated at that child because you know that's the thorn, that thorn in your side that keeps that keep hitting you and that keep painting you, your child is going to keep tapping on it. And you're going to mm-hmm. get mad. You're going to become the ignoring parent. You're going to become the controlling parent. And again, you're going to wonder why they don't want to spend no time with you. Yeah. So, cause, cause the, 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 the truth of the matter is ladies that you've been running from the hurt little girl inside of you so long where you think you don't ran away from her. And now you got a daughter looking you dead in the face, looking you dead in the face. Like, no, ma, you can't stop running. You probably ran from your, the little, the little girl inside of you, but now you got me to deal with. That's why so many of you are so uh, angry and, and mean to your own daughters because they remind you of the little you. So you Mm -hmm. either on one end resent, having a girl because you wanted a boy or you find yourself competing with your own daughter yep. because you don't got fat, you overweight, you shaped like a water heater and you seeing your daughter slowly uh, grow up being happy or whatever, or, or your ex-boyfriend, baby daddy or ex-husband still has amazing love for your daughter, but has none for you. When you look at your baby daddy, he looks at you with disgust. Mm -hmm. But when he looks at his baby girl, which you think is another you, which isn't, she's an individual, he loves with all his heart. And you hate that shit. Mm -hmm. You look at him like, so you you don't want me, but but you want her, and you take it out on her, and that's what makes you trash, and that's what makes you so damn angry, because your baby daddy or your ex husband loves your daughter in a way that you've never seen him love before, and you walking around like why why he ain't love me like that because mm-hmm. you're trash that's why. So let me uh 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 thank you uh Dihella for the super chat. Definitely not ignoring, but I do not see her as engulfing. Per- perhaps she was engulfing. Well, like I said, if we get some more uh, uh, contributions, I'm w- I'm I'm totally down with going a little deeper. But like I said, people pay for this information. I got notes and uh, after notes after notes from these books. Dihella drops another super chat. Thank you so much. Come on, y'all. Put some color in here. They dropping gems. Yeah, put some damn color in this chat, y'all. Or drop a super chat for me or Michelle. Michelle is Michelle1500 with one L. And I am, uh, my cash app is Aaron1000. If y'all ain't contributing, we just going to keep going to the video. But, hey, I got notes out the notes. I got all kinds of notes out here. But, hey, it is what it is. So let's go back to the video. From being a child, I used to watch y'all. Hold on. From living with y'all, from being a child. Hold on. Hold on. You got this analysis, but from what? From living with y'all, from being a child, I used to watch y'all do everything that y'all do. 
Uh, look how they looking. Look how, look, look how they looking like. Oh damn. Um, I didn't see that coming. Right. And then the response of the um. Right. Like, because, oh, like where do we go from here? Uh, she really he, this, is, this is what's crazy. She's leaning all in. Like so, how did you get all this information? Like I'm an adult. I, I, I dare you to say some stuff. And next thing you know, she's like, uh, from seeing y'all, I was a child. And they're just like, oh, damn, she actually said it. Mm -hmm. I thought this 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 look and me, this lean into you, like, who you... See, what she, what Tamu is actually saying is, say it with your chest and see what happened. Mm -hmm. And she's like, exactly. I'll say it. You were trash. How about that? Mm -hmm. And now she's just like, Oh, she ain't scared of us uh, no more, Walker. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what that. Uh, so they, they so they they team up the the hurt, right? Yep. Team up the people mm -hmm. who don't want to face the issues and be real. They team up because they know they got issues, mm -hmm. and they both say, or Waka Flocka starts and goes, "I'll be damned if I let a sixteen year old, you know." Yeah. And then Tammy's like, "Yeah, like wh yep. what?" Because they know that something is wrong, mm -hmm. but it, it it's better for there to be two against one mm -hmm. than one to be on her side and then them split as parents in their parenting, you know, mm -hmm. uh, strategy towards her. Let me say this: this is called triangulation, and this the the triangulation piece comes from the book called. And I hope y'all are writing these books down. I talked about the conscious parent. I talked about you're not crazy at your mother. And there's another book called Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. Mm -hmm. That book right there would change your entire life. And they actually talked about how um, when you are an adult, you don't necessarily want to deal with your own problems, right? And next thing you know, you use something called triangulation, triangulation, where either mom and auntie, so say say uh, mom is a problem, right? And the daughter's like, ma, you are a problem, just like she's doing, right? But what mom does, she'll either go to the baby daddy, the husband, just like with Waka Faka in this situation, or go to her sister, and then they'll stare at you and say, that didn't happen. Did that happen? Nope, that didn't happen. See, they didn't see it either. So apparently you are wrong. That's what triangulation is. And that's exactly how they leaning into this little girl. Look at the lean in. Look at the gaze. Mm -hmm. Look how she's looking at her. She's like, I will beat your little ass. And she's just like, I don't care no more. That's what that look is saying right there. And look how Walker is looking. The same mm -hmm. gaze. You see the gazes? This is called triangulation. They are trying to triangulate this little girl and scare her into saying something differently. And she's yeah. like, no, I'm sick of this shit. <clears throat> something like that just happened to me. And that's the problem. You got this analysis, but from what? Look, 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 look at the look, look, look. So look, he leans in first and then she, look at the lean ends, y'all. Oh, and um... Everett Blake, thank you so much for the $50 super chat. I appreciate Woo you. I learn a lot from your content. Thank you so much, Everett. I appreciate that. So watch how she says what she says and pay attention to how they lean in to intimidate her. Look mm -hmm. at the lean in gaze. This is called triangulation. The thing that y'all need to get done. <laughs> they're, now, they right both now, they're, laugh. Wow, they're laughing at this little girl. This is called gaslighting. Listen mm -hmm. to this. Listen to the laugh. <laughs> Therapy, maybe. Okay. It, was, it was like Hollywood laugh. Therapy, maybe. Now he's shocked, right? So what happens? Him and Tammy lock eyes, and they like. We're going to lean in and intimidate her. So watch. Both of them are sitting back. Watch how they're both, both of their body languages 
lean into her and look her in her face like you better not say nothing else. Watch this. Watch the lean in. Mm -hmm. I took therapy. I'm fine. You're not. Okay. She ain't oh, leaning in yet. Look at him. Here you go. He's leaning, it. He's leaning in now. Watch. Damn, so if I have a little 16-year-old little girl, tell, tell me. me. All right. Let me show y'all mm. something. Let me tell y'all something. When a mm. dude... When a dude has an issue with another dude, right? And he's like, I'll be damned if I'm finna deal with some shit like that. Mm -hmm. bro, let, bro, bro, let me let me tell you something, man. I'll be damned, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He start, see, it's about the shoulders. We use yeah. our shoulders to intimidate other people. So when, when we sit back like this and that, and a dude disrespects us, we go like, we throw that shoulder in there like, I'd be damned if I'm going to allow a 16-year-old. He threw the shoulder in. Mm -hmm. Look at the shoulder. Look how thick his shoulders got. L look at the shoulders, y'all. Look how thick his shoulders got. They were both sitting up laughing. Her posture is up. His posture is up, right? But when she actually keeps going, he throws the shoulders I'm in. I'm fine. You're not. I'd be damned, so if I have a look. You see the shoulders? Mm-hmm. That's that nigga shit, like. Right, he's talking to her like they back in the hood on a, on a block. Exactly. On a, on a stoop, he's on a up stoop. here like, oh, so, oh, so you, you want some smoke. So this what you trying to do? This, oh, so, so, <laughs> so this what we doing? This this what we doing? This man through the, sh this is simply the parental triangulation of how toxic parents manipulate their children. So he got the shoulders in. He got the lean in gaze. Watch her lean in gaze. 16 year old girl tell me. Oh, hold on, hold on. I, I got I gotta say that. Then he'd be like, 16 year old girl. Like, what is what why he do this? Why he do that jump? You know how like, I be like Because that's them trying to reiterate and reinforce yes. the negative behaviors that they're, be, that they're yeah. Showing. These mannerisms are meant to intimidate people. Watch the, watch the, watch how he jumps a little bit. Watch this. That's like, who the fuck you think you talking to? Now watch. Yeah. Now, now look at Tammy. Tammy ain't leaned in yet. She's taking the triangulation uh, uh, body language from Walker and mm -hmm. watch her lean in. Why they playing? Hold on. Right. Watch this. And that's the problem. Uh-oh. Now he backs up like, oh shit. Look at his face. Hmm. Oh shit. So he leans back a little bit like it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So the lean in, watch this. The lean in is like, who the fuck you think you talking to? I have a little 16-year-old girl tell, tell me. Tell me y'all true right. And then she stands up for herself. And she says, that's the problem. Watch he back up a little bit. And that's the problem. You got this announcement. You see that, right? He sit back up. Because now he's like, oh, shit. And what does Tammy do? Here she comes with her shit. This is from what? From living with y'all. From being a child. Her lean in. Ooh, it got oh, it. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. Like I, was doing good. Um, I felt like I was doing good now. You see that from look? living with y'all. Mm. From being, being a child. These are called lean in gazes. You lean in your child's face and you like, I just want to make sure this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And she says, kiss my ass. I'm going to say it right now. I'm tired of this shit. Mm -hmm. So let's go a little farther. Look at this. Look at this shit. They both gave them the gave her the same leaning gaze, like I dare you to say something. I used to watch y'all do everything that y'all do. Look, look at look at Tammy. Walker don't gave up. Right. Look at Tammy. <laughs> but... She she literally looked at him like nigga. I don't. I ain't scared of you. Right here. I ain't scared of you. Problem. Mm -hmm. You got this analysis, but from what? From living with y'all. From being a child. I used to watch y'all do everything that y'all do. Um. That um means she's like, damn. My gaze didn't work either. Right. She got us. <laughs> she got he, us. He backed up and she mm -hmm. said, um, like, yeah, I have so, nothing for that. Yeah, he backed up. So she, she's like, 
oh, I, I, I got this. I got one. this. I, right. Yeah, I got. What you just say? Mm-hmm. Oh, I said what I said, and she's just like, um, this is what toxic parents do to their children. And I talk a lot about single parents, single mothers, and stuff. This is a couple. Yeah. And they're That's traumatizing their child. That's what I'm saying. I was raised in a two parent home and it doesn't mean that everything is perfect. Mm-hmm. There are sometimes communication uh, breakdowns and, mm-hmm. and especially when it's two against one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because the mother and father are always going to you know, the, the mother is going Work to with each other. lead of the father, right? Because that's the order of the home. Uh-huh. So hold on a second. Give me one second, y'all. I'm trying to do something real quick. I got another video I want to show y'all. Oh, damn. Hold on. Got to do this. All right. All right. So. Okay, cool. All right. So after this, I got another video to show y'all since we got the uh, uh, the contributions coming in. And I really appreciate y'all contributing to the to the channel. I do really appreciate that. So now watch this. I felt like I was doing good now. We got to learn how to heal. Oh, man, our inner child. Look, look how disgusted she looks. Look how disgusted she looks. Look at Tammy. Mm, 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 mm. Why are you looking at your daughter with disgust? Like you got problems, Tammy. Damn. Right. To heal. Oh man. Our peace. inner child. Oh, man, I, me too. Oh, I don't know what she talking about. I don't about. understand your inner child. You crying. need to find peace in this damn car. Hey, I now we changing the subject. Mommy, right. Yup. Changing the subject. Now we changing, changing the, the damn subject. subject. Tell me, you need to find peace in this. No. Because at the end of the day, like, I don't care when you bring it up. At some point, it needs to be brought up. And sometimes, hey, this is a good time uh, to, to bring it up. I don't give a damn about this car. I don't give a damn about nothing. We need to talk about this now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hold on one second. I think I erased the video. I erased it. No, not that video. Hold on, I'm looking for a particular video. Damn. Oh, here you go. Oh, it ain't gonna play. You know what, it's not gonna play, but I want y'all to listen. It's not gonna play, but I want y'all to listen. No curse looks like, let me explain something to you. So my mother and- I know it's not playing, but put a one in the chat to let me know you can hear it. You can hear it, right? Yes. Okay. So just listen to it, because I know this this is not playing, but just listen. This is very important. Her mother had a very distant relationship. As my mother got older, her and her mother, um, I've never seen them be affectionate towards each other. I've never really seen any mother-daughter hugs. Um, My grandmother had a very distant relationship with her mother. From what I understood, they were very, um, you know, estranged. As I got older, I was raised by my grandparents. Me and my mother, I can count on one hand how many times me and her hugged or were affectionate with each other. So as I began to have children of my own, I have three girls, right? And I remember one day I was sitting in the living room and I was crying. I was uh, going through something real bad. And, you know, I, I, I remember yelling out, nobody loves me. I keep trying to give my love to people. No one loves me. Why won't anybody love me, right? And so my daughter, my oldest daughter, she was like seven at the time. And she co- So this is important right here, y'all. This is important right here. Mm-hmm. Right now, she broke up with her boyfriend and she's just like, why doesn't anybody love me? I just want somebody to love me for me, right? And then she's upset and watch what happens or listen to what happens. Comes and she tries to hug me in the middle of my emotions. I go, Symphony, not right now. Just give mommy a moment. And she says, but mommy, I love you. And it stopped me in my tracks and it struck me, you know, so, so symphony, not right now, well, me, right? And so my daughter, my oldest daughter, she was like seven at the time. And she comes and she tries to hug me in the middle of my emotions. I go, symphony, not right now. Just give mommy a moment. And she says, but mommy, I love you. 
and it stopped me in my tracks and it struck me, you know, so deep to my core. And I looked at her and I said, huh? And she said, I love you, mom. And I hugged her and I just cried and she cried. And once we were done, she said, mommy, why is it when I try to hug you, you don't hug me back? Uh. And I said, what do you mean? And then I started to think back on the times where she would hug me and I would just kind of sit there and I didn't know how to accept the, the warm or the embracement from my child, right? Because I had never received it from my own and mine had never received it from hers and so forth and so on. Yeah. Now, every moment that I get, this kid now tells me I hug her too much because what I realized is I wish someone had caught it when I was seven years old and I was begging to be loved and I was begging to be held and I was begging for attention and nobody gave it to me. Mm -hmm. That curse had to stop here. I want y'all to hear uh, this part again, because this is important. I wish someone had caught it when I was seven years old and I was begging to be loved and I was begging to be held and I was begging for attention and nobody gave it to me. Some of you have that narrative right now. You are begging to be hugged, begging to be loved, begging to be listened to, and nobody ever gave that to you. And that's the reason why some of you are so angry, disgruntled, man-blaming, possibly abusive now. Uh -huh. But this woman did not allow her own childhood trauma to affect her child. So what she did was change her own narrative. And, and she listened. You, and she, she's actually she listening to her child because yes. she knows that, you know what? This little girl is right. Yeah. Yeah. She listened to her. Yeah. And if you feel like you're a parent and you're so high and mighty that you can't listen to your child, you're going to feel low at some point. Mm -hmm. that that high that high horse that you riding on or that horse gonna kick you off and he gonna kick his feet right in your face yeah and you gonna feel it so going back to this tammy uh and and walker video how did y'all come to a decision he's gonna pay for the car oh. she's gonna make a decision i'm just gonna be there on the birthday and just make sure everything is get taken care of properly so at the end she didn't get the car because um, her parents were so embarrassed that she exposed the thing that they was hiding. Mm -hmm. And now the young girl doesn't get a car. And this is how parents treat their own children. This is how parents, uh, you know, get the last laugh. Mm -hmm. Because that's the biggest problem. Yeah. Children are afraid to say something to their parents because they know that their toxic ass parents are going to get them back in some type of way by not providing something for them or mm -hmm. possibly putting them out the damn house. Yep. That part, that part, because they feel like they have that control over their children. Oh, you want to tell me about me? Oh, see if I do this for you. See if I call you. See if I'm there for you. See if I, you know, I if see if I open up to you. And it's like, you ain't hurting me. Yep. <laughs> because I'm going to learn how to actually, you know, be a healthy parent. But mm -hmm. you got to live with the fact that you wanted to ignore, you wanted to control, and you think that you're hurting your children. Your children are going to grow up just like Waka Flocka and Tammy's daughter mm -hmm. to be enlightened yep. to the truth yep. and the real and, the, and, and what's really going on. And so, again, you want to sit on that high horse? It's going to be a hard fall. Yeah. So let me say this, because um, we're talking about the engulfing mother and the ignoring mother, right? In this particular situation, most likely F Flocka is the ignoring parent. And <laughs> to be honest with you, I think uh, Tammy is the ignoring parent also. I think both of them are ignoring. Yeah, they both have those those character traits. Because they're so quick to disengage. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you, you're you not going to do what I say? Okay, you're not going to buy the car. You're not going to get the car. I'll be damned if you tell me that. Next. You know what I'm saying? So they, they're they so quick to, to, to just withdraw. Withdraw their love when their child is just being real. Mm -hmm. Where they're just like, oh, I ain't going to help you then. I ain't going to do this for you then. And then you see why their relationship don't work. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because they doing the same thing to each other. Mm -hmm. The shit is sad. So... When you look at the um, engulfing mother and the um, and, and, and the ignoring mother, the daughter isn't aware of what is going on because she was raised to trust and believe her mother. See, a lot of times the daughter just want to be loved and she doesn't realize that she's being hated. You know, it's like as a child, you're like, hey, mom, psh, I love you, mom. Psh, get away from me. You know, uh, and then you're like, oh, I, I love you, mom. And then at some point you're like. You close yourself off to them because there is no love there. <laughs> because it's, it's a point where you it's a point when you get what is a point in your life as a child where you don't realize you, you don't realize what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're just a kid. La, 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 psh, la, la, psh. Why do I keep getting hit, right? Why do I keep getting like treated like crap? I didn't do anything, right? And right. then, but you're just like, but you're my mom, so it's okay. Psh. You know, you just, and at some point you're like, wait, mm, 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 mm. why am I being treated so badly and I'm your child? Like, right. you don't like me? Like, at some point when you're, you're like, wait, you don't like, I didn't ask to be here. <laughs> right. Like, I didn't ask to be here. <laughs> why don't you like me? Mm -hmm. Because you look at your parents like they're God. But at some point, you even look at God like, really, God? You, you question know, we, all had, we all had that feeling at some point like, God, really? Seriously? Mm -hmm. And your children are like that. You're like, like. Okay, what what am I what am I doing wrong? Or what do you want? Like but see, God God welcomes us to question him because he wants us to find you yes. know that relationship and have that relationship. Parents just think <laughs> shit, they they're higher than God. Mm -hmm. The parents just think, oh, you're not gonna question me, you're not gonna yep. talk about what's going on in here, like they're higher than God. Yep. So it, it, it it's it's <laughs> it's a generational um, curse, like the woman was saying, that needs to be broken because you raise children who get in dysfunctional relationships. You raise children who become abusive because you're abusive. That's emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. That is emotional abuse towards your children. And then you wonder why they get into dysfunctional relationships. You wonder mm -hmm. why they continue to date someone back to back to back to back and can't um, uh, get along with them. Or can't yeah. communicate or can't be open and transparent is because it started at home by the ignoring of their own feelings. Yeah. And sadly, you have two types of children. You have the child who's going to be like, no, nah, this ain't me. Just like just like their child. She's like, uh, -uh y'all right. are the problem. Mm -hmm. I am not going to internalize y'all's bullshit. We need more children this like that. Our little girl. She's like, no, nah, uh, uh. Uh -uh. Y'all yeah. ain't finna gaslight me. Y'all ain't finna triangulate me. No, this is y'all shit and y'all deal with it. I don't give a damn if you buy me a car now. I don't care. I don't want no damn car because all y'all gonna do is hang it over my damn head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? While we on this show, you better not say nothing like that. I'm gonna take that car from you. I don't want the car. It's a better gift if y'all work out what y'all got going on. Exactly. You know, so it's two sides of the other type of child that does internalize these these feelings of neglect. One is two layers of, of, of this. The, it, and we're talking about the ignoring a uh, uh, parent again, the bad treatment or the neglect. And the second part of it is the denial that anything ever happened. And that's what they actually did. Yeah. Hey, y'all are uh, bad parents and y'all are toxic. Who? Walker, what you think? I don't know what she talk about. That's the denial of anything ever happened, right? But the silent treatment, which most likely happened after they left the dealership, 
The silent treatment is probably the most hurtful part than anything. She's hurt when she's talking as well as when she isn't talking. Mm -hmm. Your parent can hurt you when there's talking, but she can really hurt you when there's no talking. Because at least you know what your mom is thinking when she's talking. And you ain't shit. Da, da, da. I wish I never had you. Okay. I, I, now I understand you hate me. Okay. But when she isn't talking, when she's ignoring you, when she isn't talking, that's even worse. Yeah. See, sometimes you can be both parents. You can have both parents and still have issues just like this in situation. And I'm, I'm reading from my notes, y'all. Does she make everything about her? Does your mom make everything about her? Has your mom ever put herself in some, someone else's shoes? No. Well, keep in mind that you're now grown. Mm -hmm. Are you as a parent making everything about you? Just, your, just like your mom made everything about her? See, I'm, I'm here to to save your child because you are already screwed up. Some of y'all, hey, y'all be on reproach, but I can possibly help your child by enlightening you on your own issues. Because just like the woman said in the other video that I was playing, she was a, a, a bad parent without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. So this is... Go ahead. I was going to say just because everything that was done to her was so normal. It was it was uh -huh. a programming of the mind and the heart and the system of growing up. And when you get that programming and that's what you know, that's what you think is, is Bible. That's what you think is supposed to happen. Yeah. So one last thing I want to help y'all uh, do. And y'all can rewind this, but I would like for y'all to write this down. So just rewind this and write this down. This is called narcissistic bingo, okay? Mm -hmm. Narcissistic bingo. How to tell if your mother or your father is a narcissist, okay? Y'all ready? Y'all can rewind this, and, and so I'm gonna go a little fast. One is narcissistic huff. That means uh, kind of like what, uh, <laughs> what, what uh, Tammy said, Right here. This is what narcissistic huff is. Gotta learn how to heal I'm at our peace. inner child. I'm at peace. Me too. Oh, I'm no, hold up. Like I was doing good now. We gotta learn how to heal. It's a little oh, bit before that. From being a child, I used to watch y'all do everything that y'all do. Um. That's mm -hmm. narcissistic huff. Yep. That's a certain amount of dismissal, right? So the narcissistic huff can either be. Oh, um, in other words, it's kind of like giving you the right to pull away mm -hmm. um, or either it's. Uh, so that's narcissistic huff is when you breathe out in a certain type of way where you either dismiss what the person just said or you show the person that just said something that you don't approve of what they said. Next is narcissistic rage. You know, that's self-explanatory. The next one is trumping the other person's stories where you're trying to make another person like, for example, I think they actually did that right here. I think they actually did that right here. Did they trump her story? Her story is y'all got problems. Let's see if they try to trump her story. Mom, Tammy, right. Well, y'all come to a decision. He's going to pay for the car. No, hold on. What she yeah, here it is right here. Listen to this. Our peace. inner child. Me too. What she talking about? Y'all don't understand y'all inner child. You crying. need to find peace in this damn car. Yep. That's a certain method of trumping the stories. Hey, y'all need to find peace. And he's like, no, you need to find peace in this car. Hey, uh, that's what you did. You know what I'm saying? So or even when point, Tammy said that she took counseling and it was ooh. like, well, what you're saying, okay, well, and yeah. I, I took counseling. It's like she's mm -hmm. trying to trump her yep. and say, well, I did that already. Now what? Yeah, so what actually that's when she said it. Yeah, that's yeah. it right here. Fine. You're not. 
I took therapy. I'm fine. You're not. Yeah, that's it. You're right. You're right. You're right. So the next one is uh, self-praise. And that's part of that, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I got therapy. I don't know what you're talking about. Self-praise. The next one is threatening to disappear by saying I'm leaving or threatening to disappear from the car dealership and say I'm not buying the car. Right. So let me give you an example, because it happens to me sometimes. Say somebody joins my coaching group, right? We're all on the call. And say sometimes you're super talkative. Yeah, I think this. Uh, da, 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 da. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, hold on, chill out. I'm going to have to mute you if you don't stop talking. You know, sometimes, no, I, da, da, da. Can, can you let me, you know, do, do my thing? Da, 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 da. Hey, and I mute them, right? When I mute somebody, they, it, it, it happens almost every time. When I mute somebody, they instantly leave the coaching group. It, it's it's happened on Instagram, on YouTube lives. If the per- cause I'm like, yo, bro, I'm how to mute you. If I mute them, they instantly leave the leave the live or they leave the group. Next thing they're like, oh, you know what? I just had to leave because oh, I just felt that. Why? Because I had to mute you. Like you're not respecting what what I'm saying. Like this is my thing. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna leave. So sometimes a narcissist would say, I'm just going to leave to make you feel so badly. One other example. Mom comes over your house unexpected, right? And you're like, yo, Ma, can you kind of like call before you come over? Her narcissistic bingo uh, way of doing this would be like, you know what? I'll just never come over here again. How about that? And you're like, Ma, no, I just want you to call before you come over. No, I'm just not coming over. And you're just like, okay, Ma, you can come over here whenever you want to, even though uh, it's, it's, it's inconvenient. That's threatening to take themselves away from you. The next thing is talking over you. They did that in that video. The next is gaslighting. They did that in that video. Think about how many of these things did Tammy and Walker do. So one, narcissistic huff, yes. Uh, Trump and other stories, yes. Self-praise, yes. When she said, I went to therapy. Uh, Threatening to disappear when she tried to take the car away or took the car away. Talking over you. Actually, yes, because they did that in a little part. Gaslighting, yes. So that's six things that she they <laughs> did to her they already. Two bingo boards. <laughs> yeah. And narcissistic bingo. The mm-hmm. next is uh, if so-and-so did this, I would do that. They didn't do that part. Uh, the next is imposing their problems onto you like it's their problem. I don't think they did that. Favoritism, they didn't do that. Playing victim, they probably would have did that, but they didn't do that. The next one is using health problems to get attention. Some of y'all got older older moms, older grandmothers, and every time they get, they get backed in the corner, they start, oh, but you know, I, I, I'm sick. You know, I'm old. So they use health problems in order to get attention. Mm-hmm. Next is blaming other people. The next is provoking drama. <laughs> It's like your mom or just be like, oh, you know what? And start a problem. You know what? Do you hear what she's saying over here? And you're like, mm-hmm. what? what? Huh? Huh? Imagine being at a gathering, a family gathering with a you know, mom. You're acting up again. Hey, come get your daughter. Come get your, your, your niece. You hear her over here. Next thing you know, what would she say? We should, she's saying da, 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 da. Next thing you know, she's provoking drama. Got the whole family all in y'all business. And Walker did it. Walker did it. He said, well, I'll be damned if I let a 16-year-old tell me. You know, that's provoking the drama provoking because it's drama. like, yep. how are you even going to say that to your 16-year-old's face when she's <laughs> expressing herself yep. to you? So that's provoking more. You shouldn't chastise your children. Yep, yep. So that's number seven. So we're not, we're at seven in narcissistic bingo. I hope y'all keeping up. The next one is fake sympathy. That's they didn't do that. Uh, using someone else's sadness to get attention put on them. That's like the the auntie that falls on a casket. You're at a funeral mm-hmm. trying to feel bad for the person that died, but here comes an auntie jumping up. Oh, take me! Take me instead! Oh, what am I gonna do? She is all I... And they're like, oh, now she got all of the attention, and they're at the funeral for somebody else. So that's what that is. 
fake apologies and tears. That is when somebody is just like, uh, you know, precious, you made me feel like crap. And I can't believe you did that to me. And next thing you, you, you start breaking down crap. I can't do anything right. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just saying you hurt me. Now, now this is a scenario where since I told you, you hurt me, I hurt you by telling you that you hurt me. So that's fake tears and, and apologies. The next is put downs. They didn't do that one. The next one is being a martyr. Being a martyr is like, you know what? I can't do no wrong. I can't do no, I can't do nothing right. Right, right. I'm just a terrible mom. I get it. You hate me. I'm just the worst person in the world. You hate me. That's what being a martyr means. You just, I'm just going to be Jesus on a cross. Mm -hmm. I'm just the worst person in the world. Mm -hmm. No, no, you're not. You just did this one thing wrong, right? The next one is uh, blame shifting. So mm -hmm. that right there is narcissistic bingo. So I need all of y'all to rewind that back a little bit, write all of those things down and take these and put them on a card or something or put them in your phone. And every time you're around your mom, your cousin, your boyfriend, your girlfriend or whatever, I want you to think about how many of these things that your mom or whoever it is, is doing in narcissistic bingo. And this will literally open your eyes and, and help you realize how many narcissists you're around on a normal basis. It could be your mama. It could be your auntie. It could be you. It could be your own child. It could be your boyfriend. It could be your husband. It could be your uncle. It could be your supervisor, your coworker, your best friend. Ooh, your best friend is a whole narcissist, I bet. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so you got any closing thoughts? Hopefully this was helpful to y'all. My closing thoughts are do not think that children do not see their parents as people because they do. And yeah. when they're trying to open up to you, don't shut them down. Don't, you know, shift the blame. Don't try to tell them what they are experiencing is not their real life when it is. Take the time to invest in your child. And if that means that it needs to slow down your life a little bit, if that means that you need to take a step back, if it means that you need to look a little bit deeper into yourself and, and the things that you have been taught, you have been trained, you have been programmed to do. If it means that you have to do a little bit of reprogramming as a parent, then do that because we're here to better ourselves. We're all here to be better, not bitter. So what I want to uh, share with y'all is your child sees you. All right. And your child at some point in their lives and in your life, they're going to tell you about yourself. And they're not going to back down. They're not going to care about you. Oh, oh, what you just say? They don't care. At some point, they're, they're going to be sick of you enough where they're going to say, well, I'm, I'm going to say it and I'm going to say it proud. You are a bad mother or you are a bad father. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is, don't get offended when they actually show you that they see you for your bullshit. Because it's better that somebody that loves you and yeah. wants the best for you to tell you this. Because guess what? Your little dumb friends, and your little your little narcissistic boyfriend that don't that that don't want you, that is just smashing you because he ain't got shit else to do, they ain't gonna tell you. And your best friend is as dumb as you are, so she ain't going to tell you. So at the end of the day, the only person that has enough balls to tell you about yourself may be your own kid. Mm -hmm. And when they tell you this, please don't punish them like uh, Walker and Tammy did. Because at the end of the day, they have a voice. And at some point, they're going to tell you how much they're sick of you. And you're a terrible parent if you ignore them or punish them for them just telling you how they feel. And the next thing is your child is an individual. 
They are not a mini you. They don't have to like the same things as you do. They don't have to think the same way as you do. I ran a system in my household, but my children were individuals. They had to run. They had to operate with my system. But at the same time, they were welcome to be themselves. And last thing, let your children go outside. Stop holding your daughter in the house so she can be your personal slave. And you keep lying to your child like, no, you can't go outside because it's dangerous outside. And you lying to her. She just wants to ride her bike, play hopscotch or do something else. Go over her friend's house. But you, since one, you don't want to be alone. And two, you think you got a personal slave. You, you keep that girl in the house like, like Rapunzel being stuck in the damn castle and shit. She want to go outside and play and go over her friend's house just like her damn friends do. But no, you keep her ass in the house so she can do your goddamn bidding and, and search around the house for your earrings when you, that, that you drop or your goddamn uh, remote control that you can't find. Your child is not your damn slave. Let your child go to the movies with her friends and stop acting like you're scared and fearful her, for her. You just don't want her to go no damn where so she can cook and clean and, clean and shit for you. And what, the last thing, stop treating your son better than you treat your damn daughter. You let your son go outside, but you don't let your daughter go outside. That's all I got. I got more, but I got... <laughs> We got to go. It's Sunday. I ain't finna be, be, be here with y'all all this time. And I'm booked today. I got another show after this. So. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> My baby booked and busy. <laughs> I have another show. What show are you going on? Um, I'm going on Sir Hell Network. Okay. What time? 9.30. Okay. So look. Look for Sir Hell Network. All right, I may remind me. I pu I put it I'm, under this I'm gonna video. Share, I'm gonna share it on my Facebook community page. So okay, if you guys okay. subscribe to my channel or go to my community page, you'll be able to access the live there. And put a one in the chat if you are already subscribed to the Real Precious uh, channel. Most likely, y'all are. Put a one in the chat if you are already subscribed to the Real Precious uh, YouTube channel. And if you are not, subscribe to the Real Precious, the Real Precious on YouTube. Let's go. Do that right now. And I'm putting in the community tab now the um, Sir Hill show that I'm going to be on in a half hour. And uh, Shira said, uh, are you going to um, post it on your Instagram live? She follows you on Instagram. Um, on my Instagram live? Yeah. Instagram. Ah. No, not Instagram live. Instagram uh, stories or something. I can so post it there. Can like. it. Yeah, I yeah. can post it there. Okay, and the last thing before we go, y'all, if this has helped y'all in any way, go buy my course. It's only $9.99. I'm not trying to take no money from y'all. It's only $9.99. freaking Go in the top of this chat or go in the comment section or go under this video and buy my course. I need everybody watching to buy my course is only $9.99 It's an emotional attachment course that will help you understand your attachment style. And if you think you good, guess what? Tammy uh, uh, Rivera thinks she's good and she ain't and your ass ain't. So go to the link in this chat right now and buy my course It's only $9.99. It's going to go back up in price. I want to do this for y'all. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for your kids. Go on the link. It's linked in the chat. Click the link and buy my course. It's only $9.99. Y'all have a good rest of y'all night. See y'all.